special little thing that was supposed to happen yesterday. <clears throat> I got delayed. Okay. Well, today we got to get our turkey. Oh, yeah, you get the one that gets one. Free, right? free turkey, yeah. They give you like a coupon or something? I don't know. Oh, we got to go over there. They might do that. Or they might, well, they just might just, be there. <laughs> it might be hanging out in the fridge. And I was yeah, thinking when yeah. you said cube, I said, how are they going to put all that stuff in the fridge? Well, if they give you a t thing from Marketplace for yeah, turkey, yeah. then that would be fine. Yeah. We'll use it for whatever we free use it for. Bird. <laughs> yeah, well, a, a certain type of bird, yeah. probably the cheaper birds. Yeah, this is the special bird that they've laid away for you. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Might be, too. It might be one of those things. Like I don't putting know. Putting it away in a special I... place. They might have it in their fridge there, and you need to pick it up there. Yeah, it does, it might say, be. It does say you got to come by Monday. Yeah. So that's what Mom and I are going to do today is go check that out. Yeah, okay. What a way! What? It serves you guys right for winning. You you guys spend a lot of money there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a fifty dollar gift card from her a while back, and I went over to. Mm -hmm. I went over to um, Shields and bought a couple boxes of 38 Special. Oh, that's uh, hard to find every day. Uh, yeah. Wheel guns anything are, right now is getting hard to find. Well, 9 mil, the shortest, th they said the thing that's going to be the shortest is 9 mil, 556, 762 by 39. Well, you know you know what's surprising? It's not, it's, not, it's not who you're thinking is buying up all the ammo. It's not necessarily government. the U.S. government, oh, no. although they are putting in large supplies directly yeah, yeah. from the from yeah. the manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. It is surprisingly they're getting. They said why a lot of huge amounts of shipments are leaving from within the U.S. outward. Yeah, is they said that they are actually the Chinese are buying up ammo from the U.S. And they said and, and, and it's not overseas orders. They're having their people here go into stores, legal U.S. citizens, go in and buy huge amounts of ammo from all over the U.S., but not in large enough that would trigger a, a, a you yeah. know, like a federal response amount of that you want yeah. you to buy at one time. You got to spread out across and then the country. And then they're putting them in custom orders and they're sending them back home. Yeah. I think for their own military. Yeah. 5.45. No, it's not just that. Every type of ammo, 38, uh, 454 Coswell, basically everything that they can get their grubby little hands on, whether or not they, I'm assuming they probably have weapons that'll, or they're just civilians. trying to, or so, they're just trying to grab all the ammo that, possible. That, that's it right there, because the civilians aren't allowed to have guns, I don't think. Well, it could, maybe, yeah. China's a very... I don't know, yeah. You got more freedom in Vietnam than you got in China. Well, you know, there, there's another thing to think about. I just thought about now is if if they have a large supply of ammo that Americans use, they could jack this price back up. Oh yeah, and resell, resell it. it back to yeah, us yeah. at a massively inflated and price. And never have it when the war is really start going and you can't get nothing. Right. Well, the that's answer, a possibility. The answer to that is. To practice predominantly with 22 mm -hmm. long rifle. If you can find it. Okay. And then when you get below a certain stock level, you mm -hmm. don't shoot oh, anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, practice obviously. or anything because yeah. you're down to your war reserve. <coughs> you used to call it the war reserve material. You don't go into there until you go to war. Yeah. And that's the stuff that you. Now, even if things break down somewhat mm -hmm. and you are carrying. You're probably not going to want to shoot unless you absolutely have to for numbers of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, it gets you in trouble. Two, yeah. you ain't got the ammo to do it. Yeah. You know, so you want to be very careful. It's like when we were talking about that when you're uh, when well, I was you carrying. You go back to the Civil War mentality. If you can't put a, if you can't put, um, you've got five training rounds. If you can't put at least three of those dead center in the target don't shoot you shouldn't be shooting okay when i was in germany running around in the woods i had 18 rounds of 38 special mm -hmm. ball yeah, yeah. not, not lit mm -hmm. and my thinking was 
if I had the shoot, I was going to be very careful oh, when yeah. I shot and only shoot if I absolutely had to mm -hmm. and not to shoot too much because you only got 18 rounds. That's three soldiers mm -hmm. of ammunition. That is not a good choice for a lot of situations. The days of, of uh, 18 rounds being enough, you know, now, the other side of the <coughs> if you got a 9mm with a 17 round magazine, like in your house, mm -hmm. and another 17 round magazine, well, for one thing, we don't want to shoot in there unless we absolutely no. have to, because that's where we don't want the 10 millimeter or 357 magnet. We don't want to over penetrate. And the 9 mil with hollow points is less likely to do it than a 10 millimeter or a 357 magnet. So when I was when I only had the when I had the, the, the snub nose 357 magnet Smith and Wesson, I had it loaded with magnum loads for a while, and then I said, you know. I'm going to go to 38s because I want to decrease the chance of over penetration. Mm -hmm. Okay, not as effective, but you know. And now I, I, I was I was watching a thing on uh, on Civil War, and they were saying, "How did these big, huge when they had the big, huge lions oh of people? God, yeah. How did they that? shoot? No, no, no." How did they shoot and not everybody blow out their eardrums the very first well, they, all time in the huge, huge line? Amount of bang bang. And cotton what they said, yeah, they were said they were putting like cotton wool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, they, and they found the right material of this stuff to put in your ear, mm -hmm. but still be able to hear, but not have the concussive force that start to blow the, out. It would, it would decrease the pressure. And they said, and and, and uh, they said it, it goes back to. When they first started talking about the um, the captain or lieutenant or whoever was on the or sergeant on the battlefield, and why they would scream because you can't hear to fire to fire the right. lines, it's because the people with their with the stuff in their in their ears shooting couldn't hear anybody. Number one, yes. Number two, yeah. it's noisy. Oh yeah. Well, that, that yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's that, but. They said actually during the Civil War, and even in the Revolutionary War, it wasn't necessarily that, that noise ish ish issue um, because you know we did until they until people started firing, it was pretty much dead quiet on the battlefield. Other than you know people screaming that you know dying and stuff, but you know they didn't have the machinery running, they didn't have tanks or any of that type of stuff running. So it's, so if one side fired and the other side was reloading before before the uh, next volley the all the screaming and everything on the battle they said it was dead quiet yeah unlike now where it's like you got the tanks and the engines well, you got and everything fully else automatic running, weapons now. and the trucks and everything else you got going fully yeah. automatic weapons now. well yeah and even semi auto mm -hmm. you can fire semi auto pretty well fast. i guess in the civil war they did have a some Spencer guns. The Spencer. Yeah. Well, the was, Gatling. The Spencer yeah. was the lever action forty. Yeah, they had that too, but. And it worked. They had the they had a crude version of the Gatling gun at the time. Yeah, but they were expensive, crew served, and a big. Oh yeah. Fight. Oh yeah. It was a three or four man operation. Yeah. And when they didn't take the so the Custer could have took cannons with him, and he yeah. didn't. He could have took uh, Gatling guns, and he didn't because yeah. it slows you down. Well, of course it does. But it also gives you a lot of firepower. Yep. And I think it's about 58 caliber out of out of the um, out of the Gatling. I think. I think it was a. Not so sure caliber. if a Gatling gun may or may not done any good with that. They, they were strong. No, I'm not saying. I didn't say that it would. But it would have given them a better edge. It would give them another operate option. Yeah. yeah. There's the Embry's truck. No, oh, I thought they would be sending a much bigger truck. <laughs> Well, they're sending what fits. Oh, okay. there's a lot of people here. <laughs> yes, there are. Art and I are the star on this one. Uh, sounds like. Oh, everybody's here. <laughs> so here we are. The usual. Yeah. yeah, that has the rocks on top of the Suburban. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's a decent time. <clears throat> got a snorkel on that truck. Hmm? Got a snorkel on that truck. Yep. 
Now, if you're driving in a blizzard, having it yeah, going, it shouldn't be in that way. Probably not the smartest thing. Allegiant and Delta are here. I would probably yeah. flip it around the other way during yeah. a blizzard, depending which way the wind is blowing. Yeah, well, yeah. Or have a filter on it. Yeah, well, uh, what happened? One of the blizzards I worked at Grand Forks. The people that had Ram Air, yeah. it, was, it got full of snow and it turned to ice. Oh, I'm sorry. Or even if it didn't turn to ice when you started it up, it ran for a while and then it melted and plugged everything up. So, so then you had to take apart this stuff yeah. in the cold. Well, first you had to dig down and find your car because there was five foot of snow on top of your car. Yeah. And you had to dig your car down to get to your car and then try to get it running because you had to dig down and, and break out all the ice off the wheel, off the belt, fan belts and all the rest of the stuff. And then you had to, um, I went ahead at that point and changed, uh, you had ram air and I turned around and changed that to draw on the air by the exhaust pipe so it warmed up. And so it didn't fill up with snow like it did with the ram air. It didn't, ram air was not something you wanted during a blizzard. The new cars, I think, are probably better. The goofy baffles and everything they have. But, uh, Both of different parts of my back like to hurt. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where it has been the last couple days is my right side of my back. Which hasn't been very pleasant. Now today it's my left side of my back. Oh, sure. But always the lower back. Well, my left leg was giving me trouble last night. I'm not sure what the game was, but I'm assuming it was over to my back. Turkeys seem to like this house. Yeah, I always do. I don't know if something in his trees or his yard or he's got a feeder. Does he see a feeder? Oh, there's yeah. a feeder there. Well, that would explain a few things. Yes, it does. Okay. You gotta fatten them up, you know. Okay, so this, that's why the feeder's there and that's why the turkeys are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now we know.
should mm. both of them have got their feet face in the hall. Yep. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. They're watching. Mm-hmm. Watching and talking. <clears throat> Thirty years. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Actually, I think it'll be next year. Will be probably like thirty years and something there. Damn. I was in the elementary school in the fifties. So it tells you how long. I think ago ninety-five, was. ninety-six was when I was at sixth grade at Jim Hill. So yeah, it would have been ninety-three, ninety-four. 
or no, wait, it would be 94.95. Would have been, I think, my last, my fifth grade year, I think. That makes sense. Actually, that was already retired from the Air Force, by the way. Yeah. Well, I think about it right. Yeah. No, my sixth grade year was 95.96. I still have my class ID from then, which is me. I kept all my class IDs. Well, in 92 I retired in the Air Force. I think I went back to college in 93. Mm-hmm. 